tobacco. And I say a lot of times people don't read the Old Testament. I didn't say tobacco, I said tobacco. Now it's interesting that sometimes your Bible notes, these Bible notes, are, most of them are good. Most. You got to be careful. I want to read the notes before we get to chapter 1. It's quite interesting about Habakkuk. Now, first thing, the Hebrew word means to embrace. But they also said in, a, in another language, it could mean a garden plant or fruit tree. It depends what you who you look at and what you read as far as the name meaning. All right, the background is Habakkuk predicted invasion of Judah by the Chaldeans, chapter 1, verse 6. Now, Chaldean originally meant an ethnic group that appeared in southern Babylonia. By the 9th and 8th century, Chaldeans began to rise in power in Babylon. Among the early Chaldean kings was Medrach Baalidian, 2 Kings 20, verse 12, Isaiah 39, verse 1, who twice in the late 8th century took and lost Babylon's throne. The Chaldean naval officer reigned from 626 to 605 BC, began to dismantle the Assyrian Empire with help from the Medes and founded the Neo-Babylonian Empire. By the time of Habakkuk, Chaldean had come to be synonym for Babylonian. So for a while there, when you read the Chaldeans, they were south of Babylon. And then they became to be Babylonian. Trans and wealth, we can read here is interesting. It's all interesting. I just don't want the history. Maybe sometime I'll go through the notes and bio. All right, the message and purpose. Now, listen to this. Like the book of Job, Habakkuk deals with the problem of understanding God's ways. Why does God allow injustice to prevail? How can God use the more wicked of Babylonians to punish the less wicked Judean? Well, we know the answer to that. They weren't less wicked, according to Jeremiah. They were worse than the nations around them. How long will God allow evil doers to dominate the world? That's the question today. When is the rapture going to happen? When is he going to take us out of here? God did not give clear answers to the, to the questions of Habakkuk raised. Does that sound familiar? Instead, he called on the God, he called on the godly to have faith. That's today. So, we're looking at it, which I didn't know until, and I read that. It's quite interesting. We're not going to get far because it's an interesting book, like Job. Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 1. And I guarantee Habakkuk is one of them books in the Bible that has never seen the light of day. Probably doesn't even have fingerprints in it. Now, since 2000, my previous, previous, previous Bible, I've kept track of how many times I've read the Bible all the way through. Since 2000, I've tried to read the Bible all the way through once a year. I'm going to say safely 20 times I've been through Habakkuk. As a family, we went through Genesis all the way to Revelation, back to Genesis to Habakkuk again. So this is twice we're going to go through Habakkuk. How many times your church has opened Habakkuk? So Habakkuk chapter 1. The burden. The load. Which Habakkuk the prophet did see. See. Somehow the revelation to Habakkuk was to be seen. I don't know how. And it doesn't say vision. It says burden. There are places to say there was a vision. There was a dream. 
It was a burden. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry? That I will not hear? Have you not prayed to the Lord and didn't feel like he was listening? Now we know God hears our prayers. But we don't like is God's long-suffering. God is very patient. God is not going to come in our time frame. I can't stand that. Being impatient, a sin of mine. And you find this throughout Psalm. Great men of the Bible spoken of by God and the Holy Spirit. We all have this problem of, God, aren't you listening to me? You say the Apostle Paul. Three times he sought the, the Lord about that, that thorn in his flesh. Everything the first time wasn't good enough. The second time, come on, Lord. Third time, God said, hey, no, Paul. I got something right now I'm praying for. God hasn't told me no. I've had other Christians laugh. We got to realize, and, and maybe because I opened up my big fat mouth, I used to teach when I was in prison, God is not a prayer bubblegum machine. Now, when I was a kid, you put a dime. You didn't have to, I, I, I've seen bubblegum machines four quarters. Give me a break. Now, you go and you put your coin in. And you know what we want? We want that specific color of flavored bubblegum. When we want that red bubblegum and it comes out blue, we get all upset. There have been times you put money in the thing, you churn it, nothing came out. God hears... God will say yes, God will say no, God will say wait it out. Even cry out of thee of the violence. And that will not save. Isn't there not violence today? The Bible says that Noah preached. God describes a time of Noah as violence. You ever wonder when Noah's building that ark or, or the point where God says, come on in. You ever wonder if Noah sat there on something, hay or maybe an animal or, 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 or a stone. Well, come on, won't anybody else get in this ship? Won't they? Listen, when you're preaching to lost people, you're like, come on. And you and you watch their attitude, and your it's hard to describe that your your heart start and it's happened to me. Your heart starts crying. Somebody will come up to you and they'll say something, and it'll be mean and cruel, and you're like, you're, oh, "Come on, just will you get right? What more can I say? What well, what can I do more than the gospel?" Now, see, the churches will throw the celebration. I'm not going to try to get the church. But I'm saying, don't do anything to get anybody to come in. And you can't. You just get the gospel, the gospel, the gospel. I'm reminded by, I forget, I think it's William Cartwright, but Evangelist Cartwright. He would dismount his horse. And he would grab the person he was witnessing. And he beat him and beat him and beat him. And see that guy, yeah, I'll receive the Lord. Yeah, I'll trust in the Lord. Now, that's not easy believing. That's threat believism. That's not salvation. And we're looking around. People are getting shot. People are dying. People are losing. Cancer. I, I can't stand the word cancer. I've had two wives die of cancer. And there, there are people in the assembly of the brethren, cancer. Went to church Sunday and... This family's come back from being sick, and this family goes out sick. 
I, I, read, I, I forget what I read. Something. I don't know what was it. Some on Facebook today. Read. I'm trying to think. Well, what? They got COVID, and they're suffering. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I thought the governor of Florida said COVID's gone. I thought they said COVID's gone. And then another report I happened to read about, they're saying the people who had COVID, I mean, they say your brain gets foggy. And there were about five things, that, and I forget what it was, there are about five things that can happen as a side effect in your life from COVID. No, the fact is I know somebody got COVID and they had no taste anymore. They can't taste nothing. Life to them is like eating a white of an egg. And you pray and you cry and that will not save. There are people getting saved. There are people getting healed. We got to get our, our ears off the media. I have to watch. I have to watch that, that that media when I'm going to do the laundry. And I'm just amazed how I just sit there the lies, the lies, the lies. We may not be seeing salvation in America, but other nations are turning to God. And again, like it's like I said, it's the book of Job all over again. Why does thou show me iniquity? You look around. These people are doing that. The Sodomites are parading around. We won Roe versus Wade, but our government wants to overrule that and allow women to get abortions. And how the, how the church shut up right away, because they're wrong. We didn't win nothing. How the Republicans, and most of them came from Florida, are, have ruled that same-sex couples can now be classified as married. Didn't anybody get upset when a 10-year-old girl crossed the state line to get an abortion? No, it wasn't until about two weeks later. They went after the man that did it, an illegal immigrant. How come all these illegal immigrants are causing all these crimes, but we still have an open border? And don't give me that Donald Trump is the answer, because they were coming across the border when Donald Trump was president, and Clinton, and Bush. Donald Trump did not have the Supreme Court rule Roe versus Ray. While Donald Trump was in the president, they were still openly doing abortions. Come on, let's, let's open up your eyeball. I look at these people. Donald Trump, Donald Trump, I got fried today by Christians. I call him the Christian Messiah. And I fear for the fact me, maybe he does win presidency again. Maybe it'll be the sick. And I know you want to go where I'm where I'm thinking. Because I could be wrong, but I would be crucified by the Christians by mocking their Jesus. A man that has been divorced twice, married three times, and he was divorced by his wife because he was fooling around with another woman. Bankrupt his company six times, and they got upset because they said, he wouldn't even be allowed in your average Baptist church. He'd be church discipline. And, oh, you can't say he's not going to get saved. He can't. Are you ranking on me because what I said about Donald Trump? Or are you ranking on me because I said church discipline? And what I'm trying to say is we are in a day and age today even the Christians are getting offended. And you kick their shin. I just did something for my church. I just left. Oh, it, it's going to raise feathers. It's going to ruffle feathers. They're going to they're going to sit in their room. They're going to say, well, how can we override what he just did? What can we tell the people? 
a preacher that said, I don't fear nothing. <laughs> You're going to fear what just came out in the mail. There's violence all around. For whatever reason, it is had Daytona B. Somebody crashed one of the, the, the gates, ran some people over, and ended up in the ocean. Oh, a couple years ago, we had a woman drive her car into the ocean trying to kill her and her children. They go out in the water down New Smyrna Beach or Long Island, and they're getting bit by, by uh, sharks. There was a parade and somebody opened fire and somebody goes into a mall and there's open fire and there was a woman today that opened fire at an airport. Wilt thou not say? This is not God's fault. This is sin working. And somebody came there, well, Mr. Preacher Stolly, what, uh, what would you say about God and all the things that's going on today in the world? Sin. And it would be such a problem that the churches don't preach about it. And you would say sin, and they look at you like, what's that? And you mentioned the word adultery. I mean, shacking off with another woman is not their way. Oh, oh okay. Many years ago, we had another ministry down by the beach, with ocean, and there's a place that had chicken wing. I didn't realize this. This is most places with chicken wing. You go in there, you can't just get chicken wing. You got to get the women's bodies exposed. What is that? Am I going in to have chicken wing, or am I going in for a porno show? Many, many years ago, again, when I was in the, in the, in the, show you how things have changed. When I was in the prison ministry, I, I read about this and I brought it to the guys and I said, you know, one of those say, hey, check this out. And I told him, I said, listen, you know, there's a men's Bible study. I'm like, wow. I said, it's going to be at Hooters. Uh, this was like 2000, this is before 2010, before my wife died. And he like, what? Men in prison, like, they're having it where? Today, that, that, that wouldn't. You tell, oh, we're going to have a Bible study in the park under a gazebo. And they're, oh, what? There's violence all around. Now, I'm not talking about the, the violence and the overreaction by the media to make everybody panic to buy tomorrow's newspaper. But we just had another volcano in Japan doing something. There's a war in Ukraine and Russia. Extreme heat in Europe with, with Europe on fire. Extreme heat in America and uh, there's fires out west again. And then gun violence. Uh, no, you know, I hate to say it, that doesn't bother me because I'm not afraid. Uh, listen, if I die, I'm going to go to glory. I want to get the gospel out to those that are lost, and I want to help Christians grow. The answer ain't Washington, no matter who or what. It's God. But you know the problem with the Christians is that they pray to God, they pray to God, and they pray to God, and they give up praying to God. Pretty soon the Bible says they're going to give up on looking for Jesus to come. Saying, where is his coming? I think right now a lot of people say Jesus is coming. Jesus. I think they say this because it's been rehearsed. It's the common thing to say. And cause me to behold grievance. Well, iniquity causes grievance. There's death. There's pain. Every time I see an ambulance, I pray for all involved in that ambulance. I say, even if it's a false alarm, 
it, it, if it's a false, it's still it upset a family. They think the first thing they got to do is they got to call nine one one. That's grieving, and there's nothing more. And I've had to. You call nine one one, and there's a problem, and it's like, when's that ambulance coming? When's that ambulance coming? When's that? And it just seems like forever. I think when people are not getting, not going to work and stuff like, that, I think you're gonna to get to a point you're gonna call nine one one and gonna be no one there. There have been two nine one one calls where one, one they hung up on the person. Another one's like, well, if you're not gonna go in the ambulance, forget it. We're not gonna send it. Now they lost their job. For spoiling and bonds are before me. The are people stealing bonds. They're taking things that's not theirs. I worked at a grocery store before I became disabled. And I not late not during the day, but I worked late night. I was working the store was still open, it was not overnight yet. And I had watched a couple of people start shoplifting. Now I I've, I've been in the grocery store business since I was sixteen. I started following them around. And the thing is, when I grew up as a, working for a, a stock boy and all that, you keep your eyes on me. If you lose sight, you can't say nothing. Because they may have put the product down. And my boss comes up to me and he goes, what are you doing? The person stole that product and it's in their handbag. Yeah, let them go. What? Aren't we? No, we don't do that no more. We've got insurance for all that. What? What's the whole business with Walmart? And all the cameras they got? One store says, let them do it. But I've been in Walmart where I, where I have, because I used to listen to a police scanner. You know, go to Walmart, got a report of a stolen TV. What? How on earth did they walk out with a TV? And you and you stole Tic Tacs. Violence are before me. This is violence is before Noah. This is the days of Noah. You know, Those are the days of Noah. They were evidently in the days of Habakkuk too. Right? Violence. There's nothing new under the sun. I'm, I don't know because it doesn't completely tell it, but I think maybe the, the aspect of what the sodomites are doing today, I don't think it was shocking Lot. Lot invited two men into his house and they came banging at the door. The angels, they turned out to be angels, blinded the men at the door. You had every man from every quarter and every age. When they were blinded, they're still trying to find the door. No. And the education of Lot's time brought his two daughters to think, hey, there's no other man. Let's get dad drunk and have sex with him. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, look what I did. Your turn. We're not quite there yet. I mean, right now the teachers are having affairs with the children. And again, I read the headline. There's this, there's this teacher. She's bloating. The fact is, you know, she, she's got this stomach bump. She's pregnant. And it was a student that got her pregnant. Look at me. Huh. What? What? Well, how can you get upset with Muhammad having an underage wife? I didn't touch her, nothing. Yeah, right. When that's the normal cause today. I guess Islam has slipped into school. Hey, she's young enough to take her. 
That's your prophet Muhammad. Ten-year-old girl gets pregnant. That's your prophet Muhammad. Well, this guy, he has three different women. One of them is his wife. His wife has threes and foursomes and all that. That's the Mormons. They have special program now about the Mormons on television. Making it look all oh, great how great the Mormons are. And like, God, why ain't you doing something? He will. God has a time. Listen, God seen yes tomorrow before he, we seen yesterday. And they are that, and there are that, rays of strife and contention. There's fights and battle. Uh, Mickey Ratland, two families were fighting it out, and you can watch the video. A man goes climbing through the, the, the drive through window because he didn't get relish or whatever. Have you, at least, all right, I don't watch news. Have you just seen the headline? Why? I mean, it'll say something about, you know, road rage. I'll look it up and say, what? Well, I mean, this guy didn't use his blinker. He didn't get a ketchup pack. I've been, to two, I've been to two fast food restaurants. One didn't have onion rings and one didn't have a top for my drink. I just Okay, let's drive off and go somewhere else. I didn't punch anybody out. But the strife and contention, let's look at it for a moment. Acts 15. What is strife and contention? Acts 15. Verse 39. You'll be amazed at this one. And the next one. Acts 15, 39. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And Barnabas took Mark, okay, Barnabas, and sailed to Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas. This contention was between Barnabas and Saul. Paul. What's the contention? Barnabas says, let's take Mark with us. Oh, no, I ain't taking him. That guy left us when we were on the field. Come on, Mark. No! I'm not taking him! Well, you won't be that way, Paul. You go. Paul says, okay, fine, I'll take Silas. You know what Paul said later on about Mark? Take Mark. He's profitable for the service, for the ministry. That's a fight. That's an argument. Over what? Because Mark left. When we don't, and the Holy Spirit didn't tell us why he left. He just he said Mark left. Went home. There's another place. Look at chapter 11 of Acts. Contentions. There are contentions in the church house. Oh, I don't like the color of the carpet, I've been told. Right. You know, Sally causes contention. Because over scripture, over what's right. And I got the wrong one. Eleven two, maybe. Oh yeah, eleven one. A contention is an argument. Can you imagine what the violence the way things in the world today? Can you imagine what arguments are happening inside the walls of a house between a husband and wife before the children? Between a boss and his employee? And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word. You think, amen, glory to God. Cornelius and his family got saved. And when Peter was come to Jerusalem, they were of the circumcision, Jews, contended with him. Peter, what on earth did you go over that Gentile's house? What is that on your brow? <laughs> Pork. What? Bacon. 
from one animal. Swine. You were in the house of the... Jonah's going to get up from his grave and he's going to rock your head off. What's the contention here? Peter, by the word of God, went to a Gentile's house and probably had Gentile food because later on Peter's eating with the Gentiles. But, but wait a minute, hold on guys, I gotta go. Here comes the Jews. Peter got a taste of the Gentiles like, ooh, wee. Boy, we've been missing out. There's a contention. Christians. Back to Habakkuk. And the thing is, the, the, the contentions today, minor stupid things. You ever seen, and it's so funny, I wait to two days after Black Friday. Yeah, Black Friday. You ever watch some of those videos, people decking it out to get that TV, to get that doll, to get that phone? They're slugging it out. They're beating each other. They're beating each other with carriages and all that. And they don't get the product. They end up going to jail. There are videos on YouTube with Good Friday and how they battle it out. Have you ever watched the People's Court? You ever watched some of the battle and 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 try and, and, and the trials that come before Judge Million? And you got to think, you know, these kind of cases they ought to have. You know what? It ain't good enough for it. Really. Therefore, the law is slack. That doesn't mean the law is the law is slack. That doesn't mean that God didn't write enough laws. And in America today, think, oh, we didn't write enough laws. We got to pass more laws. Meanwhile, where the cops can't afford the laws we already passed. Well, what's the what's the latest one in Florida? Something with motor vehicles again. Oh. You can't have the radio blasting too loud in your car. Well, that sounds like a good law. But you cannot call the police about your neighbor's dog barking or your neighbor's having a party. you got to file an online report because they ain't got enough police to come and file the report. There is not enough police. You think they're going to pull somebody over just so they can write them a ticket because it's being too... What about the law that says you can't drive a car while talking on the phone while the cop is going down the street talking on a phone? You ought not to have anything distract you while you're driving. And the cop is sitting there using his computer while he's driving a police car. What it means that the law is slack means no one is obeying the law. Come to my neighborhood and look at all the dogs that are not unleashed, nor have a tag, and bark at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. But we have a new law that you cannot leave your dog tethered without being an unleashed. Okay, he says on a great law. Two o'clock in the morning, the dog is outside. Uh, animal control works from eight to four during the day. At four o'clock, he goes home. I, I can just see the dogs like now, like, oh, Fido can't get in trouble. The animal control officer is not on duty right now. We got to wait till morning. Judgment does never go forth. Man's judgment. 
God's judgment will one day. One day, everything that has to do with Jimmy Hoffa, whatever happened to Jimmy Hoffa, will come before Jesus Christ. He knows where the body is, and he knows what happened to the body. He will know if you've been arrested and put in jail for false arrest. Is everybody in jail that you in the jail? Man, everybody in jail is there because you know they weren't supposed to be. God will weigh it all out. But you see, you want it now. We want it now. I do. I wish God would give man. A Pinocchio nose. And Rudolph the Red Nose every time we lie. Every time we lie, it would grow so far and then the red will start blinking. And the famous words will be, Duck! But God didn't give us Pinocchio nose. God doesn't give our nose to be red. And well, what about that man out of the pulpit? No, Bible. God gave you a Bible. Why? You know, people know. Yeah, but that's what they want. And right now we're in a day that God will give you what you want. Now you may not like it in the eternal life, saved or lost, but. Why does God allow the Catholic Church? Why does God allow you know the, the Southern Baptists to do what they did? Why does God allow the more? Because that's exactly what people want. God will give you what you want. That's what you want. Now God will warn you. For the wicked does compass the righteous. That means here's the righteous, and all around him is the wicked. That's today. Wait a minute, how can we, oh, there's earthquakes and troubles and, and problems and, you know, just like the days of Noah, just like the days of Lot, you know, what Jesus said in Matthew. How can they never say, because they don't read Habakkuk, but why don't they say, well, hey, like the days of Habakkuk? Yeah, they sell tobacco too. No, Habakkuk. How about the days like they were in Job? Not one of those men said, hey, Job, you know, that's what happened in Noah's time. Now, Jesus said, but listen, that's tribulation rightly divine the word of God. The rapture, we have no, we know the seasons. We know the time frame, but we don't know the date. There will be rumors of wars, and that's been throughout all history. You can't wrongly divide the word of God to make it to be what you want to be. That's just as wrong. Therefore, wrong judgment proceeded. Well, that's today. How about Abel? Did he get right for doing right? No. Sin is overpowering this world. And as the church closes its doors, as the church goes silent, as the church takes on the worldly ways, the world is going to act like the world is going to get worse to defile evolution. You expect the world and the ungodly to be Christ-like. And you're not even teaching them what Christ is like. How do you expect everybody to do right and not be pagan? When twice a year you're celebrating paganism.
How do you expect people not to commit adultery and call it shacking up or whatever they call it and all that where you take trunk or treat instead of Hollywood, Halloween? You see, the church is doing what the world has done. They have removed the words of repentance and sin and righteousness. So today, people don't even know what they're doing. And when you do get God's people who are doing what the Bible tells them to do, even the Christians mock them as like, what are you doing? And there'll be, I let my light shine. You want to find that in the Bible for me? It's not in the church age book. I'm the light of the world. That's kind of funny because I thought Jesus. I, I told one woman, she goes, oh, I'll, I'll let my light shine. I asked her, I said, well, let me just ask you one question. I got her mad. I, I had that gift. Do they even know you're a Christian? And what kind of light you have shown? Habakkuk asked the same question, Job. I read that, and then these first four verses came out real. He's asking the same question as Job. He's asking the same question that we ask. Listen, I've asked God. What on earth is going on? Okay, yes, God, I know sin, but can we carry the answer one more step? And Habakkuk did the same thing, and I already read to you. God does not tell him. There are things that are going to happen in your life, and guys like, oh. guys like, I know. Why? I'm not telling you. Well, when we get to heaven, we'll have all the answers. You want to show me a chapter and verse on that one? Come on. Give me a chapter and verse that... <laughs> Why I looked both ways in the crosswalk, started walking the crosswalk, and this car came flying and ran me over. Uh, uh, oh, I'll get the answer in heaven. I may well, I may not. God's not entitled. We can't force him to give us all the answers. Paul says, I got this thorn in my flesh. And God's like, I know. Wait a minute. God, I didn't. Okay, we come to the agreement. We, we both know I have this thorn in the flesh. Yep, got it. Why, God? Because it's there. Satan I mean, Satan did it. God, how am I going to get rid of this thing? It's perfectly well. It's perfectly for your learning, for, you, for your the growing grace by me. And, and you read Paul's in, like, that's not really what I wanted to know. But, all right, it's from Satan. And it's to keep me from being prideful. I bet, really, I bet you that helped Paul through the rest of his life. Whatever that thorn in the flesh was. And today people try, it was his eyesight. It was a, we, it doesn't say what it was. We might get to heaven, hey Paul, hey, yeah, how you doing? What's that thorn in the thresh you were talking about? What's the thorn? That thorn in the flesh you had. Look over here. I don't know what thorn is. Come on, come on. I'm going to go praise and show hallelujah to Jesus. Don't worry about a thorn. There ain't no thorns here. So Habakkuk cries to the Lord in. We'll pick up verses 5 to 11. 
the reply of God to Habakkuk's cry. Now, isn't it a shame that Christians don't open Habakkuk and read it? 